Good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday. I hope everyone is doing well. Uh, we'll turn this air down a little bit. Um, make it colder. Make it colder. Um, so, yeah. I hope everyone is doing well. Um, so, today I'm going to talk about... Um, how would I word it? Uh, I guess progression. Um, how to tell if you are progressing. This is something that's difficult to tell to uh, to tell um, it's difficult to recognize I should say that's the word I was looking for it's difficult to recognize um, because it's very subtle it's very very subtle and there's something that happens that we continue to do that disallow us from actually recognizing it and because we're so hard on ourselves we won't recognize the true change that is taking place within us um, and I also want to talk about um, uh, how I guess how to progress uh, there's something that needs to happen within you um, in order for change to happen on a soul level and so I want to talk about that as well so like Whitney Williams let's get to it <laughs> so how to tell if you are changing on a soul level um, changing on a soul level it doesn't necessarily mean I mean ultimately it will be you will not do things certain things anymore you won't engage in certain things anymore however in the beginning if there is a change in your soul when you engage in something that is unloving it won't have the same feeling, or I'm sorry, it won't have the same sense of fulfillment that it once did. Because in the moment, or in the state that most of us, if not all of us, are in right now, is we get some sense of fulfillment and pleasure from the unloving things that we engage in. But when you change on a soul level, those things no longer resonate with you. They no longer become that fulfilling thing that you engage in. And so like, like I used to watch TV all the time, like total couch potato. And like show after show after show, like I would just watch movies. And if there wasn't a show on, like I said, I would watch movies. I would just, that's what I would do all weekend long. And there were times like I didn't do a thing. No house cleaning, no laundry, nothing. Like I would just watch TV, watch movies. And that brought me comfort. That brought me a sense of, um, I don't know. It just, there was a sense of fulfillment. Like I felt fulfilled. Um, but it really wasn't. Now, I turn, I still have the habit uh, because, you know, you, have, you know how you have your shows record, set on your DVR to record? Well, those things are still being recorded. So when I do turn on the TV, between, you know, I have time between my, my day job and my night job. I sit down and I have an early dinner and I watch, I turn on the TV and my shows are there. And so I turn them on, but I'm, I don't watch it. Like I'm usually like on my phone doing something else or just looking outside like I'm not engaged anymore but the, the habit is still there the habit to engage in it is still there it's just habit you just you just do it and it's like it's like muscle memory you just do it without even thinking about it but what I'm finding is that I don't get any fulfillment from it like it's very difficult for me to even turn on a movie and and know what's going on because I'm not paying attention I'm paying attention to other things. I'm thinking of what I have to do. I'm thinking about things to put in my book. I'm thinking about, you know, what to put on Instagram. I'm thinking about all these different things while the movie is playing or while the show is playing. And it was frustrating. I was like, why can't I relax? And I was like, is this what I call relaxing? Like just vegging out in front of the TV? And I'm thinking, why would I want to relax like that? when I have so many creative things going on in my mind. Like if I'm, if I'm thinking about my book, if I'm thinking about videos, if I'm thinking about Instagram, these are all creative things. These are things that uh, require expression. This requires the engagement of the soul and that's what I'm focused on. So when I turn on the TV and it doesn't bring fulfillment, I'm like, ugh, but that's not really what I want to do. Clearly I don't want to do it because I'm not engaged in it anymore. 
And so this, I wanted to put this out there because sometimes we engage the things that we used to do and we don't realize that we're not really being fulfilled by those things anymore. And we, get, we, we tend to get hard on ourselves because we keep doing the same thing, doing the same thing, doing the same thing. But that's not what's important. What's important is the feeling. What are you feeling from it? It's always, that's always the most important thing is what are you feeling about something? What are you feeling about something? There is a bad vibration in my will right now. Bad vibration in my will. I just had a uh, balance. I don't know what's going on, but I need to have that check. Um, <clears throat> so, um, what else? I was distracted by that, as I should be. <laughs> um, <clears throat> what was I saying? Dang it. The soul. Expression of the soul. So, oh, we get hard on ourselves. So we tend to get hard on ourselves when we, or come down hard on ourselves, when we engage in something, we're like, I'm just still doing the same thing. But focus on what you're feeling. It's always about what you're feeling. That is your compass. That is your compass. And when you're when you're not sure of how you should be feeling, that's when you revert to truth, or that's when you you look at truth, and then you ask yourself, well, if this is true, and this is false, and I'm feeling this way about this way, I'm feeling this way about this thing. And that means I need work or it means that I'm on track and what I'm doing isn't really what I should be doing because I don't have uh, a, the, the feeling of wanting to do it. I don't have a sense of fulfillment in doing it. So never deprive yourself of what you're, what you're, uh, whatever brings you joy, even if it's something that's unloving because we, ha the soul has to experience itself before it can realize that it's doing something that is out of harmony with love. Like, if you don't engage in doing the things that you enjoy, even if it's unloving, you will never get the corrective, the, the karmic um, response, the universal response. You will not get the law of attraction to show you that you're off track. And it's the feeling, the thing is, see, we remember, we as souls, we remember, like, here's the thing, like, a lot of my childhood, I don't remember like the actual events I don't remember but I remember feelings I may not remember what someone did to me but I remember the feeling that I got when I was with them my soul always remembers my mind may not remember what took place but my soul remembers if I if I can't trust you my soul remembers if you did something to harm me and my soul knows exactly what what someone did to me to make me feel a certain way and that feeling will come back up the soul never lies the soul always tells truth always if you want to know the truth just reach into your soul and it will tell you exactly what went on there are things like I couldn't I couldn't understand why I felt so uncomfortable around people but I knew what I did I knew that I felt uncomfortable around certain people and I may not have remembered because the things that happened were a long time ago when I was a child, but I remember the uncomfortable feeling. That never leaves you, ever. Ever, 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 ever leaves you. You can forget about all the things that anyone has ever done to you, but you will remember the feeling when you think about that person or when you're in, that per when you're in the presence of that person. Always the soul tells the truth. This is why it's so important to start getting to know yourself and, and, and understand, believing your soul, filling your soul, getting in touch with your soul. Because you are the soul. When I say get in touch with your soul, I'm saying get in touch with yourself. That's what I'm saying. The soul thing isn't separate from who you are. It is who you are. But the mind has disconnected because now you, you know yourself as the mind. You know yourself as consciousness. And somehow you've separated. We all have separated ourselves from knowing or being in touch with our soul. It's like um, it's like a, it's like a keyboard or a mouse connected to a computer. Sometimes the computer malfunctions and it doesn't recognize the keyboard. It doesn't recognize the the mouse, even though it's plugged up. It's connected, but there's 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 a disconnect somewhere, and the connection isn't being made. 
And so that's what we have to get back into is, is, is get back into that, that connection where we do recognize what's present and we also recognize what's within that thing that is present. And that, that's what all this is about. This is what, what all of what I'm saying is about, all of what AJ is talking about, Jesus, whatever you want to call him. It is what people strive for, but they just don't know how to do it or they don't know how or they don't understand it fully. But there is there is a deeper, deeper desire to connect with ourselves. But not everyone knows how to do that. Not everyone knows how to achieve that. And I need to get over. over a whole bunch of times. I think this is okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's what I've been noticing is the things that I used to engage in if I have idle time. The things that I used to get engage in when I had idle time, I engage in, but I'm not being fulfilled anymore. Like, it's not fulfilling. It just isn't. Like, I... I I don't have a desire to, like I said, watch a lot of TV, um, I, uh, movies, really, unless there is a a, um, a reason, and I mean there is an emotional reason, like there has to be a reason why I'm watching a specific movie, and there are times, like, I don't even know what the movie is about, but I will be drawn to it, and I'll watch it, and it has to do with something that I have an emotional injury about and it will come up and this is all the law of attraction it's all coming to me I'm not really understanding what's in the movie or whatever now, like I was watching a movie yesterday and it was uh, titled price I think or the price and I started watching it and there was a, there were a lot of things that I had experienced growing up that were happening to this guy in this movie and I was like whoa and I was just like feeling it and I was excited that it was happening because I was actually emotionally responding to it and that's what I want but the universe knows that that's what I want God knows that's what I want my guides and, and guardian know that's what I want so why wouldn't it come to me in that way I don't have to think about it because that which you desire and I've said this before that which you desire will come to you and that which you desire will will be made manifest and all these things will come to you to make it manifest. So if I want to heal things within myself, because that is a huge desire of mine, is to rid myself of these emotional injuries that are within me. And I'm having the universe support that. I am commanding the universe to bring me these things so that I can achieve the goal that I have. And that's my goal. The law of attraction will just bring it to you. Or you can force it and make it happen. But if you're forcing something to happen, it's not your law of attraction. That means that your soul isn't in it. Your mind is in it, but your soul is not in it. When you have to use your, your mind, when you have to use your willpower to make something happen, that is not... Oh, my camera's all crooked. Hold on a second. Now it's crooked the other way. Anyway, when... When the law of attraction, well, I'm sorry, when you use your willpower to make it happen, that's you making it happen. But when the law of attraction just brings you, well, I'm sorry, when you just have things delivered to you and it's something that you desired and you didn't try to force it to happen, it just happened, you were just navigated to it or something navigated, uh, or the universe navigated something to you so you can have in order to reach whatever desire or goal that you have, that's the law of attraction. That is the law of attraction. So this is this is the difference between trying to force something to happen when you're really not into it. And this is what prevents a lot of people from progressing is they don't have the desire within their soul to, to achieve whatever it is that they want to achieve, whether it's progression, well-being, uh, whatever it is. If it's not within the soul, the universe is not going to help, help you achieve that. And so it's going to feel like, you're working by yourself. It's going to feel like you don't have any help. It's going to feel like you are just, like you don't have any support. That's what it's going to feel like if you try to improve yourself without your soul being on board. Because you don't have the support of the universe. You have the support, well let me just say this. You don't have the support of the universe for that task, for that goal, for, for that 
what you're trying to achieve. You have the support of the universe for all the other things that you have within your soul. So if you have the feeling of nobody's going to help me, I don't have support, I'm all alone, well, that's what you're going to get. And that falls in line with what's within your soul. So if you want to improve, but you feel you can't, you have a feeling that you can't improve, and on top of that, you have a feeling that nobody's going to help you, guess what? It's going to be very difficult for you to improve. Number one, you're going to have to do it all by yourself. You're going to have to force everything into place, but that means you're working against the universe, and that also means that you're working against your soul. So you, what you want to do is have a desire. So, so that's the next part I want to talk about, is how do you progress? How do you change? Well, you have to have a desire for it. You really have to want to be loving. That's, that's all that I've been doing is I have a desire to be more loving because that's the basis of all change is to become more loving. To become more loving is to have more love within you. Not thinking about all the ways to be loving, just to be loving. That's it. I just have a desire to be loving. I don't want to hurt anyone. I, that's a desire. I don't want to hurt anyone. I don't want to mislead someone. I, th these are my desires. Like I truly do not want to do these things. I want to be able to lead someone or show someone a path where they can take 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 it for themselves or, or take you know control of their lives or whatever. That's what I desire. I desire to help someone help themselves. I don't desire to fix anyone. I don't desire to change anyone because I understand that those things are unloving. And because those things are unloving, it doesn't fall within the desire that I have of being loving. So, that's my that's my desire. I just want to be more loving. That's what I ask for. That's, that's what I truly want for myself, is to be in a place where I'm able to, to know things. I want to, like there's a desire for me to not work hard. Uh, there's a desire for me to not have to struggle. Um, and I'm not talking about work or anything like that. I'm talking about knowledge. I'm talking about knowing the truth. That's what I'm talking about. Like, I want to know the truth. I want to know the truth of what is, whether it's outside of me or within me. I just have a desire for it. And I don't have any preconceived idea of what that should be or, or, or anything like that. I just want to be more loving and I want to be more knowing. But I also understand that being more loving, or I'm sorry, being more knowing is an automatic, um, it's like a, um, a byproduct of love. So I don't really want to know more, want to know more, want to know more. No, that stuff just comes to me because I want to be more loving. I don't want to be smart because I want to prove anything to, to anyone. I, I, that's, not, that's not what I want. I just want to simply know. Not to say, hey, I know this or hey, I know that. I mean, because now I've gotten to the point where I know a whole bunch of things, but I just don't share it. If I know someone doesn't want to hear it or they have their own beliefs and, and they, you know, they just don't have a desire to know and they want to hold on to what they have, I respect that. I respect them holding whatever it is that they hold. And sometimes people expect me to, um, to share certain information with them. And it's like, but you don't want it. You want the knowledge, but you don't want to do anything with the knowledge. You just want to know. You want to keep it in your head. You don't want to use it to improve yourself. And that me that tells me on a soul level that's not what they want. And so it's no different than oh, it's no different than a minor coming up to me and being sexually suggestive. And to them, they're like, oh, I want to give myself to you, but which is half, not, they're not minors, but all these young folks are coming to me. And it feels weird. But anyway, being 41 years old, it just feels weird. So it's, it's my responsibility. Like I know they're not in a place where they, they truly understand what they're doing. So it would be unloving in me, uh, or unloving of me to accept what they're offering because what they're offering is from a state of degradation. It's from a state of unknowing. It's from a state of, of, of uh, having a lack of love. Like, all these things I am aware of. And this is what love allows you to do. It allows you to see things clearly. 
and it allows you to see cle things clearly that are in other people, things that what the truths the truths are, and what's within you. Like this is what love grants you. Like you will not take advantage of anyone if you have love within your soul, and it will just it will not set right with you if you even think about doing it. it it's you'll cringe because that's not in alignment with what your what's within your soul. This is this is how this is how you progress. You just have to want to be a better person. Not you want to be a better person. There's a difference. <laughs> There's a difference between I want to be good or I want to be a better person but have no desire to to do the things that or how would I explain that? It's not because you people say, oh, I want to be good, I want to be good, but there's no true desire. Ah. So it's not like I want to be a better person. My will's really, something's real. I need to change something in it. Um, people say, I want to be I want to be a better person. I want to improve myself. Um, but they don't want to let, uh, they don't want to let go of the things that keep them from being a better person, from being a good person from being a better person. They don't want to let go of those things that are preventing that. And this is the problem. This is the problem. So, you have to have a soul desire. And that means you, you have to be willing. Not just willing. That's the thing. It's not willing. You have to have a desire to let go of all the things that are unloving. This is a, a something that, that has to be within you. A feeling of... I want to let go of all the things that are unloving because I want to hold on to the things that are loving. I want to let go of the things that are untrue because I want to hold on to the things that are true. This has to be a desire of yours. It's no different than desiring a car. That same feeling that you have when you desire a new house, a new car, or or a new some new jeans or whatever fancy things that you desire or non-fancy things that you desire. That same feeling of desire is the same feeling of desire that you have to have to let go of all the, the things that are unloving, all the things that are untrue. That's the desire that you have to have. There, that is your passion to do this. You want to actively engage. You want to, so that you can actively make changes. And it's all about feeling. Like this is all based on feeling. This has nothing to do with action. It has everything to do with feeling. You don't have to do something. It's never about doing. It's about feeling. And once you feel, excuse me, once you feel the desire and you feel the feeling of wanting to do the better thing, wanting to do the true thing, wanting to do the loving thing, then the actions will just happen. They, it's just part of your life. It's part of your existence. You, you won't have to think about it. It just happens. It just happens. You don't have to say, oh, this is what a good person looks like, so I have to do this. No, you will just simply do it. Oh, a good person wouldn't do this, so I can't do that. No, you just simply won't want to engage in it. That's what I'm talking about. It's all, it's all a feeling. It's all a feeling. That's it. That's it, just a feeling. And those feelings will dictate your actions. And you never, ever, ever... like It's like... Just think about all the times you've taken action in an unloving way. You didn't think about it. You just did it. There was no thought about trying to manipulate someone. You just did what you wanted to do or did what you felt you needed to do to get what you want. You just acted. And maybe afterwards you were like, oh, that wasn't nice. But you acted. You just acted straight away without thought, without hesitation. It's the same thing when you're living in love. You'll just take actions that are just uh, like second nature. It just happens. And you won't think anything of it. You won't think anything of it. There will be no no um, ulterior motive. You won't say, oh, um, like you can do good things for people. But you do good things. Most people do good things people because they know that this is what a good thing is. They know this is what a loving thing looks like. 
they know this is what it looks like to care. So I do this so that people understand or feel that I care or so that I can convince myself that I'm a caring person. There's always something behind it when it's not true. But if you're operating strictly from your soul and your soul is loving, you will just automatically carry it out just because you want to carry it out. For no other reason, you don't care what anybody thinks about it. You don't care how you think about it. You just do it because it's coming from a place of love. And it's like I said, it's second nature. And you'll start to notice this if you're if you're on this path. You will you will start to notice this. You will start to notice it. But don't get or try not to get sidetracked on the um Oh good, you're going to Jack in the Box. Cause that that can swoop right on in here. Um <clears throat> Yeah, when we engage in those things, because I mean, I still engage in it, and sometimes the thoughts are still there to do things, but it's like, okay, I may have a thought to do something that I've done in the past, but when I think about it, I'm like, that's not what I want to do, that's not fulfilling, and this is the same thing with spirits, like if you're having influences from spirits, and you have this thought that comes across your mind or, a, or a, a, some kind of feeling of wanting to do something, an urge. And you think about it and you're like, that's not in harmony with love. Like, that's not loving to myself. That's not loving to the other person. You'll start to, it, it, the thing is, you'll feel a certain kind of way about it. Like, you're like, that doesn't. When you, when you picture yourself doing whatever urge that you, you, you're getting... You'll have a, a, a feeling response to it. And that's coming from your soul. And it's like, that's not good. That's not nice. That's not right. And this is what you have to pay attention to. I told you to pay attention to your feelings. Pay attention to your feelings. And all will work itself out. Um... So yeah, that's that's basically it. I just wanted to talk about that, but it is a feeling that you have within you. It's not an intellectual thing. It's not something that you. Um, it's not something. It's not something that originates from the mind. It's the desire that you have to have for change. Is it originates from the soul? It's a desire of the soul, not a desire of the mind. The desire of the mind is operates like everything else. I want to achieve this. I want to achieve that. Because, like, for instance, people want to do certain... Go to school to do certain things, uh, you know, to have a career. Well, not all of it is from the soul. You know, being a doctor looks good. Being a lawyer looks good. Being an architect looks good. Being a nurse is acceptable. My family does it. They'll like me because... This is what, you know, they praise. You know, my mother was a nurse. Her grandmother was a nurse. You know, this is what we do. And I want to be accepted by my family. I want to make my family proud. Because if I make my family proud, they'll accept me and they'll praise me. And they'll give me things and I'll feel good. And I'll feel good from all the praise that they give me. See, that's not from the soul. It's from the mind. It's from the mind. And so this is the difference. Like, it has to be soul-based. And the thing is, your soul-based desires will most likely piss people off. If they have another life planned out for you, th yeah, it's going to upset them because they have their own plan laid out for you. And a lot of family members have a plan laid out. They have your plan. Some <laughs> for some people, oh my gosh, your family had a plan laid out before you were even conceived. Oh, I can't wait to have a baby, you know, and, and dress them up like this and dress them up like that and, you know, put a college fund aside because, you know, I want them to be a successful lawyer. Look, some of you, do, look, before you even got here, and this is, here's the thing, for parents who do that and you miscarry, this is why you're miscarrying. This is why you cannot conceive. The pressure is too strong for the soul. It's too strong. When that child comes in and you conceive and it doesn't make it or you can't, well, that's a different thing, but it's, it's sort of close. But the pressure that you have or that you're putting on the soul, I should say, the expectations, just because the child is not 
is not yet born and doesn't have a mind, it feels the constraints of your thoughts. It feels the constraints of your emotions. It feels the lack of freedom. The soul is designed to experience freedom. The soul is pre-programmed to know what that is. This is why a child will know when they're not receiving love and they will start crying. A child does not know what a heart is. It doesn't know what the word love is. It doesn't know any of these things. But yet it knows when it's not present. It doesn't have to be taught love. It's already pre-programmed to know what that is. And it's also pre-programmed to know when there's a lack of it. So anytime you have unloving thoughts, anytime you have constrictive thoughts, restrictive thoughts, anytime you have any kind of a feeling of, of suppression, any thought that you have that results in the... Goodness, I'm seriously wrong with this dark. Any... Um, Was it uh, any, 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 oh, any feeling that the soul receives that is taking away their sense of freedom, it will hinder the soul. So all these emotional injuries are already being uh, put onto the soul. All, first of all, all the emotional injuries that you already that already exist within you at conception, the child already has them. But it's what you're, what you are um, directing at the child as the child is in the womb, is is what the soul is feeling in the moment. And sometimes it's too great, and it just vacates. It cannot be there. It's the feeling of I don't want to be here, and it and it leaves. And you call it a miscarriage. That's what we call it, a miscarriage. But the soul's like, screw that. I can't. I just can't. It is not saying I can't with words. It's not saying I can with intellect. It's saying I can't. On a soul level, this is so uncomfortable. I cannot stand being in this place. I don't know where I am, but I know that I need to get away from this feeling. And you literally push your child out of your womb. You literally push your child out of the out of your womb. And this is the same thing, uh, you know, with fathers. Fathers can be like, you know, fine, you know, you have a one night stand or whatever, and you know, you get this girl or woman pregnant and you don't want the child you're feeling like I don't want this child he's gonna ruin my life and you know I'm not gonna have the same freedom this is a sense of rejection as well and the child feels that and what what do you want to stay in a place where you're not wanted no you try to get out of there quick so what do you think the soul is doing you're a soul you're a soul feeling like nobody wants you what would you want to stay there no your first response is, you know what, let me leave. I, I, it's so uncomfortable to be here. Now just imagine that the soul has nowhere to go but outside of the womb, which means leaving the spirit body behind, or I'm sorry, leaving the physical body behind. That's what happens. The child is, is in the mother's womb. It's doing this little gestation thing, and it's getting ready to prepare itself to come into the world. And... All of a sudden, it's like, I can't. And so it leaves along with its spirit body and leaves you with this corpse just there inside the woman. Can't say mother anymore because you, you haven't had the child. And this is what happens. I don't know how I got on that subject, but <laughs> I did. So whatever. Maybe, you know, someone needed to hear it. I don't know. I don't know how I got on that. But, um. But anyway, that's that's how <laughs> you know it's it's anyway it's um it's it's how you feel inside. If you had love in your soul, if you have love in your soul, and this is your desire, of course the child will feel like all right because some parents think about it. Some parents are very excited to have a baby. They're like, I just want to have a child. And they feel wanted. And so they stay. Even though they have the emotional injuries that are within their soul, they stay. Because they feel the love. And you can see some parents. You can see, you can just see it where, you know, they, they want to hold the child. They want to just hold the child close. And they want to give it love. They want to show love. 
And they, they do. They project love to the child and the, and the child just loves it. And that's why they stayed. Because there wasn't anything pushing them out. There was more inclusion. Now granted, um, some people use their children as, uh, as an addiction. This happens all the time. Um, they want to use their child um, as a means to love. They want something to love them in return is really what's happening. I love you, you love me. The whole Barney thing. I love you, you love me. We're a great big happy family. I don't know the words to it, but anyway, something like that. <clears throat> That's a song of addiction. If I love you and you love me, but I'm loving you so you can love me back. Because, I mean, think about it, because as kids get older... Parents tend to love their children less as they do their own thing, as they become their own individual person. <clears throat> That's what parents do. That's what parents do. Parents want you to be what they want you to be. And when you don't do that, they get, they get angry and they love you less. Or you actually start to see that they really didn't love you at all. They were using you as an addiction. <clears throat> and not only that, sometimes parents will have a child to manipulate the other person. Some guys will purposely impregnate a woman to keep her. Some women will Im uh, allow herself to get pregnant on purpose. She will do things like say oh I'm on birth control when she's really not or you know um, do something to the condom if, if that's what's being done all kinds of things the same thing with men men do this stuff too so it, it's both ways it goes both ways but <clears throat> what I'm saying is sometimes they'll use a child as a, a device uh, to manipulate because they're really not looking at them as a, a soul coming in and I want to love the soul and this is a soul and I want to give the soul the best uh, possible uh, or best opportunity possible that, that's not really a thought it's like oh and sometimes it's just people are drunk or people just want to have sex and it just feels so good and they don't do anything to prevent a pregnancy and so it's not like the child was made in love no the child was made from the act of sex if if a child could only <laughs> if a child could only be conceived in love, <laughs> we would be a dying race. We would have died out a long time ago. A long time ago. So, and I've heard someone say this. They're like, "Well, how come you know um, God doesn't just allow you know children to be made in love and not be made when there isn't love?" <laughs> because your definition of love isn't love. So what you think is love isn't love because you want to feel good and feel touched by your partner and laying out rose petals and candles and doing all champagne and all this stuff you think that's love oh I love I'm gonna show you know my partner I love him and we're gonna you know make no 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 that's not even love that's not love at all those are those things are not love and so what you think what people think is love isn't love and so that idea of how come God won't look there wouldn't there wouldn't be a human race anymore because we're so unloving we are so unloving think about all the people who have accidents like accident children think of all those people <clears throat> think of your child if you have one how did it happen were you looking to have a child and why were you looking to have a child ask yourself these questions Ask yourself these questions. These will help you. These questions or the answers to these questions will help you understand why you have the interaction with your child that you have. That's what that's going to do. Is it's going to expose some truth for you. Yep. <sighs> anyway. Um, I had to block some of this out because I had to come to my uh, the main building to sign some paperwork and um, uh, obviously I don't want people to know where I work so that's why you have this big old black thing on your uh, screen um, I can't park there and 
what is the hours here? I should have gone the other way. Mm, whatever. You know what? Yeah. Anyway, so that's pretty much it. That's all I wanted to talk about is how to um, know if you are changing because you just won't have the same fulfilling uh, or the same feeling of fulfillment doing the things that you used to do they just won't bring you the, the same feeling and you'll find that um, you, you, you'll find this if you've been working on yourself you'll, you'll feel it and it's going to feel like you know for some people they'll feel like why can't I be happy how come I can't be happy how come nothing is fulfilling anymore and the reason why that is, is because you haven't found anything new. You haven't found anything new that's loving to bring you that fulfillment. That's what's happening. All the things that you've been doing that were unloving, you no longer find joy in or fulfillment in. But you have, you have not created anything to replace it. And that's what we have to do is we have to find something to replace it. We have to engage in loving activities to bring us the joy that we desire. So, so yeah, that's it. That is, um, that is it. So, if that is you, if you're in a uh, place where you are finding it difficult to find joy on this path of being more loving, it's because you have to find things that are in alignment with your new soul condition. Because your soul is no longer in the same condition as it was previously. It is in a different condition. And every, every condition, every soul condition um, has activities that are associated with that, that condition. So a very a degraded soul will engage in drugs. Um, a degraded soul will engage in uh, robbery, uh, will engage in um, uh, cheating. Uh, engage in manipulative uh, things, you know, to convince people to do things. Um, and so we have to find new things. That's part of expansion is now we have, we are in a soul condition to uh, experience things in a different way. Now we have to find those things to experience. We have to find different things to experience so that we can fulfill the soul uh, the soul's des uh, desire of experience and creation, expansion, all these different things. So as the soul changes, your your activities need to change. And the thing is, if you're not ex if your soul is changing, and you're not exposing yourself to different things that are in alignment or that are in alignment with the new soul condition, how can you feel fulfilled? And this is why you don't feel fulfilled because you're not engaging. The soul is here to engage, to experience things, to create. But it can't do that if you don't find things to do that are in the new vibrational state that you're in. The new state of love that you're in, you have to you have to do things and it's 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 a little difficult. I should say it can be difficult because this world is based on a certain soul condition, a very degraded soul condition. Meaning, watching, you know, violence on TV all the time, watching arguing on TV all the time. So if these things don't bring you fulfillment anymore, this means you have to find different things to do or different things to watch. It, it just depends. But once the soul gets a taste of expansion, once the soul gets a taste of not being confined to the, the, the degrading activities that you were once or it was once engaged in, 
it has to have it just craves something different and you have to give it you have to give the soul what it desires so if it just depends on what it is it, I, I mean it's going to be different for everyone um, because everyone has different passions and desires and wants to experience the world differently um, like I like at one point I never wanted to travel like I, I just had no desire to travel outside of the states and now there's a strong desire to do that and so now I'm working towards and I also understand that I don't even have to make that happen because it's going to happen the universe is going to allow that to happen because now it's a desire of mine the soul condition my soul condition is saying hey I want to experience this I want to expand so anyway let me turn this thing off and get in this building but uh, that's it so if you have any questions go ahead and ask and um, if not then have a great Wednesday bye now